Hey, welcome to this week's Favourites Favourites. I've got my favourite favourites. Anne said these needed to last all the weeks we were doing the recording for Favourites Favourites. But the problem is, that's one of my favourites. Probably one of my less favourites, Cherry Ripe, but it's a favourite favourite. Crunchy, definitely a favourite favourite. Dream, favourite favourite. Another Cherry Ripe, still a favourite. Gold, yes! Picnic, yes! In fact, quite a few of those are my favourite favourites. And, well... <laughs> There's less in there, but nobody will realise. They just think we didn't have the budget for the filming when they come to do the rest of the favourites' favourites. Now, do you know, on YouTube, we've got over 200 of the episodes that we've made for Kids Church. And it's been fun looking through some of those, but I want to tell you which is my favourite favourite for this time. And it's one from about a year ago that Tammy did on the God's Word, that when we open the Bible, when we read it and we understand it, it can give us direction and it can show us which way to go. And in the middle of it, she recorded her two children, Casper and Eva, all right, with blindfolds on, listening to her instructions of which way to go. And at one point it went all completely wrong with Casper and it just sticks in my mind, that one. So I hope you enjoy this episode from Favourites Favourites and that God would speak to you and you're just enjoying this time that you've got as well. So see you again. Bye. Hi there C3 Kids, my name's Tammy and I'm telling today's story. We've been talking about God speaking to us and you know He speaks to us in a whole heap of different ways. He can speak to us directly, He can speak to us through a dream, through a vision and last week we talked about God speaking to us through nature, through His beautiful creation. Today I'm here to talk to you about how God speaks to us through His Word. And when I use the word the term word, I really mean the Bible. So although a human has penned and written way, way, way back when um, the word of God on paper, really it is God speaking to us. And there's a scripture in Psalm 119 that talks about hiding God's word in our heart. Now, when I think about hiding a word, or what God has said in our heart. I think of an old school filing cabinet, but you might know what, what, what that is, but you used to put your important documents, maybe like your passport and your birth certificate, and you'd file them away and then lock it away and you get it out when you need it. But something that you might relate to now is that if you've created a document in Microsoft Word and you've typed it up and you put in a picture and some cool word art, maybe like rainbow word art, and then you go to save it away and you might put it away in a folder. Do you know, doing that means that you can go back later and get it when you need it. And you know, that's exactly like the Word of God. If when we read it, we highlight it or we take notes or some people might take a journal we are actually storing it in our heart so that when something something's up a problem comes our way it's almost like we open that little key and we unlock what has been stored in our heart and we start speaking that word into our situation did you know that there is a whole chapter in the Bible, in the book of Psalms, that talks about how useful and helpful the word, the Bible is? And today's scripture that we're going to talk about is Psalm 119 verse 105. And it says, your word, the Bible, is a lamp to my feet and a light for my path. Now, when you think about a lamp, like an old lamp, it's not going to light hundreds of kilometers down the track is it it might light a meter or so a bit like a torch you walk into the the loo at night when you're camping you only need to see a couple of meters ahead of you the that the bible is saying that that's exactly what the scriptures or the word of god is like when we are stuck when we're in trouble if we get the word and we have it in front of us and we're speaking it we're confessing it we're praying it it's going to guide our steps one step at a time. Now I'm going to do a little bit of an experiment. We're going to cut to my kids at a playground to see how well they can be guided with my voice. Are you ready? Let's go. 
Hi C3 Kids, we are at our local playground. Say hi to Eva, say hi to Casper, and we are going to do a little obstacle course. So first time they have to do it blindfolded with no instructions. Second time they're going to do it blindfolded with my instructions. Do you think you can do it Eva? Yeah. Do you think you can do it Casper? Um, Yes. Let's go. So Casper, when you are blindfolded, you need to skip five times, hula hoop five times, run up the hill, come down the slide, and then kick the football, for all the lovers of the world game, at that silver thing. Can you do it? Yeah. Difficult? Yes. What would make it easier? Uh, if you could see. <laughs> yes. Or if you had someone, what? Instructing me. Yeah. Do you want to try that? Yeah. Let's go. Three, two, one. Go. Spin. So Casper is going to have a turn now with my instructions. So Casper, just at your feet is a skipping rope. If you pick it up, you can do five skips. Keep following it until you find the handle. All right, you ready? Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Now turn towards my voice and walk towards me. Keep walking, keep walking, keep walking. Bend down, bend down. There you go. There's the hoop, spin around it. And now stop and turn around. Yep, about there and walk. Walk up the hill, turn to your right a little bit, keep going, right a bit more, right, other right, up, 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 you're on the very edge, you're kind of near the rocks, so go right towards me, that's the rocks. Do you know you're right, Casper? So the hand you right with, turn that way. Yep, you're at the top now, so move over. Turning right. Turn right, turn right, and you'll find the little step just in front of you. Good. Hop up onto it. Get yourself on the slide. And go down this line and turn towards my voice and keep walking keep walking a little bit to your left 
a little bit to your left. There's the ball just in front of you. One or two steps in front of you. Kick it. Well done. How was that? Was that easier? Um, much harder. <laughs> I don't know my left from my right. Oh no. Here we have Eva blindfolded for the second time and she's going to listen to my voice. Spin, 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 spin. All right, you are standing on the skipping rope. So pick it up. There's one handle, another handle. Okay, good, five. One, two, three, four, five. And if you drop it, can you turn right, Eva? Walk towards my voice, keep walking. Keep walking, turn left a little bit. Left, left more, more left, more left, left. Stop, turn left. Pick up the hoop, five. Oh, very sunny. And now going up the hill. And the slide is to your left. You're almost at the top, there's a step, good, and you're almost sitting at the top, and you can come down, all the way down, and now the ball is to your left, so follow the noise of the traffic, good, keep walking, a little bit to the right, and you've got it, well done, how was that? Fun. <laughs> Was I it think, easier? Yeah. What made it easier? The instructions. Good. Well done. So there you have it. Eva found it a lot easier because why? Because of the instructions. Ah, uh, and Casper, if you'd known your left from your right, would that have been easier? 20,000 times. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. Bye. Back to the studio. So. Did you notice in my little experiment how much easier it was for my kids to get from one point to the other because they could hear my voice and they could follow my directions? The scripture that we read before talking about God's word being like a lamp or a light to our path is very much like that situation there when they could hear my voice, my words their path became much clearer and direct. So I just want to finish today by telling you a story about when this book, these words, the words of God helped me. In fact, with this scripture here in Revelation, I've actually written beside it the date, October 2017, and the place that I was living because I don't know about you, but there are times where I could actually name the scripture, the word that God has given me to take me through a really difficult time. So I want you to imagine this. It's three years ago, 2017, and we had just moved to another city. In fact, another city in another country called KL in Malaysia. And so because we're living in the city center, we needed to live in an apartment. And we thought it was so great because our apartment was on the 22nd floor. That's really high, right? So we got amazing sunsets. We could see all the high buildings in the city. In fact, we could see KL Tower, which is like an icon in the city, until it was built out a few months later from some construction. But on this one night, it was probably only the second or third night that we were living in this apartment thinking it was so great to be in the city center. At about midnight, my two kids were asleep. Do you know what happened? The fire alarm went off. And it was so loud and so alarming as it should be that we ran out of our front door of our apartment, saw our neighbors who were a bit older and a bit confused and they said, well, let's just take the lifts down. And everyone knows that in a fire, you can't get in a lift, right? So we looked over at the stairwell, the emergency exit, and we thought 22 stories. And our neighbors actually said, we're not going to go. So our choice was, we weren't going to go in the lifts with our neighbor. So 
what we did is we grabbed a kid each, one for my husband, one for me that was still asleep. We picked them up, we opened the fire escape steps and we started down 22 stories of steps. Now, if my calculations are correct, for each story in a building, there are two flights of steps with a little break in the middle. So if we're on the 22nd floor, 22 times two flights of steps equals 44 flights of steps on foot carrying a small child. So as you can imagine, the first few flights of steps, I'm just running and I'm concentrating on getting out there and getting to the bottom. About halfway through, I'm starting to get very fearful. Have you ever felt like that? And you can't think of anything else except a bad outcome. And so that's going through my brain until a scripture, something from the Word of God, from Revelations, comes back to me. And I remember that God had promised us this. Here it is in Revelation chapter one. It says, I am, this is God speaking, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord God. Alpha and Omega is the first letter and the last letter of the Greek alphabet. It's like God saying, I am letter A and I am letter Z. I start things and I finish things. So as I'm running, probably about the 10th story mark, holding my child, this scripture comes back to mind. I'd hidden it in my heart and at this moment, it comes back to me and I realize, God, you began this. You brought us to this country. We are not going to get out of here unless you say so. And you've got good plans. And so you are the beginning, you are the end and, and it's not gonna end in this stairwell, in this city, in this high rise building. And so we ran and I kept declaring the whole way down. My legs were aching, my body was aching, but I kept running and I was declaring, you're the Alpha and the Omega, you're the beginning and the end God. And we got to the bottom, we got to the foyer. There's a beautiful fountain trickling down and all the neighbors were at the bottom of the building and we waited around for a couple of minutes and guess what? There was no fire. And we think that maybe a rat crawled into the fire alarm and set the whole building off. But we got out of there and God kept his promise. And I was able to recall that promise again and again. And that was very much like the scripture that we read before where God's word lit my path one step at a time. Let's pray. Today we're going to pray a bit differently. We're going to take a scripture in the Bible and we're going to pray it. So you might do the same later on in the week. You might be reading something that speaks to you. You might recall the memory verse or another scripture that you've heard and then you can put that in a prayer and I'll show you how to do it. So this is a story in Exodus chapter 13 and 14 where the Israelites led by Moses are running away from Pharaoh and the Egyptians. So it's the story just before God parts the Red Sea, which is a miracle. But this is what happens just before it. So it says God led them a roundabout way through the wilderness to the Red Sea. That's a bit like this year. We've done everything in a roundabout way, right? Things have been very unusual. And then it says that they, the Israelites camped on the edge of the wilderness, but God went ahead of them. He guided them um, every day with a pillar of cloud and at night with a pillar of fire. And I feel like today through God's word, he is saying to us that he is going ahead of us. So we're going to pray that today. We're going to pray his word in our prayer. So are you ready? Dear God, I thank you that you are on the throne. You are King of Kings and you are Lord of Lords and you know the exact situation that we are in right now. And while it might feel that we've done a roundabout turn or we're on the edge of something really scary and horrible, God, I pray that you would go ahead of us. You already have gone ahead of us and we thank you for that. And we pray that your word 
would light our path. You would show us the way to walk in every step at a time. We thank you, Lord. You are good. Thanks for going ahead of us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Here's a mission for you this week. Grab a Bible, or maybe you might like to use the memory verse in a second, and take it and read it, get it in your heart, and pray it, just like I did. Here's the memory verse. How are you guys going with the memory verse? Here's a little reminder. My sheep hear my voice. I know them. They follow me. John 10, 27.